Hello and welcome to week 16 of a 52 week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about IIS's worker processes and overlapping work pools. Today I'll cover where web requests live, what happens if you get a process with high CPU, can you kill the process forcibly, what are the consequences, and more. So let's dive right in. Notice I have in my environment, I have task manager set up. So we're going to take a look at our worker processes. And let me scroll down to W alphabetically. So I don't have any W3, WP.exe processes set up yet. They haven't started. And I have my IIS manager with my application pools. I have a few example pools here. And a couple websites, Contoso and Acme.com. I'm going to be using both of these and then command prompt. I've already navigated to inetserve because we're going to be using app command for this. Now you'll notice I have multiple app pools but I don't have any worker processes related to app pools started yet. So if I go to contosa.com and I'm going to refresh, I'm going to hit F5, refresh, and then notice that that my W3 WP.exe process spun up. This is called on-demand start which allows unused app pools to not have to live there all the time. And so there's actually a few different settings. One is to shut them down after inactivity. 20 minutes of inactivity is the default. Or even when you power up a new machine or reboot, in a situation like that, the worker processes aren't all spun up until the first request to it. In fact, let's do the same thing here. I'm going to go to acme.com. I'm going to hit refresh, F5. And then notice another worker process started because Contoso and Acme are in two different app pools. And we can see this here too using app command list worker processor WP. And now we can see the two app pools and the matching worker process or the PIDs here, tw the 2300 and 1900, right there and there. So app pools were introduced with IIS 6.0 and offer tremendous power, flexibility, isolation, configuration. There's so much you can do with it. And what I want to show you here first is what happens this overlapping. App pool. What happens if you recycle an app pool? So I'm going to go to contosa.com, hit F5, refresh. Now, if I go to IIS and I right click and I do a recycle, now what happens? Now, watch carefully. Well, first, let's just do it. And notice if I refresh the site, I really didn't even notice the impact. It seemed really fast. And in fact, let's even do this. I'm going to hit recycle, go down here, hit F5, F5. I get zero downtime. So I somehow was able to recycle this and nothing broke whatsoever. So why is that? The way that IIS handles this is by having a new worker process will spin up and then until it's completely marked as healthy and ready to take new requests and only after then will the previous worker process shut down. It's called overlapping app pools or overlapping worker processes. Now it is possible for a timeout to occur if you have a really long running request on the first one, you do a recycle, the first or the original worker process will not shut down until it's finished its requests or the timeout has been reached, which is 90 seconds by default, and that's configurable. So now let's try this and watch it a little bit more carefully. Watch over here, this w3wp.exe, and currently it's 2852. Recycle. Now look at this one, a new one, 812 spun up, and there we go, the previous one shut down. Now this happened really fast because I don't have any long running code. No requests are running here on my little demo machine. But it shows the overlapping. It will not close that first one until that, that other one has been established. And we can catch it here in app command 2. So if we hit recycle, see if we do this, we did. And so notice that the contosa.com, I have the old one, 812, and then the new one starting up. And of course if I do this one more time, now you can see that this one, the 812, is now been torn down and so now we're left with 3008. So you may be asking what happens with in-flight requests that happen during this time and here's what happens it's not the worker process that handles the original request it's actually HTTP sys and works together with WAS. WAS stands for Windows Process Activation Service and WAS because you can't really have WAPAS, WPAS so it's Windows Process Activation Service is WAS and so they work together to take the incoming request and it hangs on to that request until it knows it has an acceptable W3 WP worker process that it can hand it off to. Now HTTP sys works in kernel mode 
which is right there at the core of the operating system. Works very fast, very efficient, but what happens is you need to make sure that anything that runs in kernel mode is extremely stable. And HTTP sys doesn't do any processing. It takes dumb requests. It t takes some stuff from cache, potentially if it's cached, or it takes this in-flight request. It could be in a real complex, advanced ASP.NET request, and it just hangs on to it. It doesn't do anything with it until it finds this worker process. It hands that off to the W3WP, .exe worker process, which does all the processing and hands the request back, and of course that goes back to the browser, and the person that made the request sees the result. So this is how the W3WP process is fairly disposable. You can kill this without a lot of consequences. In fact, let's just do this. So I see my contosa.com. I'm going to refresh this. Notice it works. Now let's just go and end this process. So I hit end. Now it killed it, right? Notice there's no worker process for contosa.com anymore, but because of the on-demand starting here, I can hit refresh, and very quickly, see that? It started up again, and there was no downtime because HTTP sys held on to that request until a new worker process had started up, and then it says, okay now, W3WP, why don't you take this request and hand it back to and actually process it for us here. This allows IS to be very powerful and flexible in this regard. Okay, so we looked at a couple things here. What happens though if you, like, why not just kill this worker process? Well, any requests that are currently be, being handled by this worker process, and there could be ones, in fact, let's go here to, I have a slow page right here called sleep, and this takes five seconds to run. So if I took a request like this and were to re refresh here, now within those five seconds, I kill this, that would potentially kill that request. Now in my example, HTTP sys is kind of smart enough to know to hang on to it and re-request it, but that's not always going to be the case. Many times if you kill that, there's some consequences. Also, there's some shutdown code if you're using application end in ASP.NET, for example, or various different framework environments. You want to make sure that that ending code is handled correctly. Also, there's more that han that's handled within this W3WP process than simply handling the requests. This can handle um, cache, can live in here. We can see the memory. Of course, right now it's very small. But if we have in-process session state, if we have cache, that's built up over time. And as a result, there's useful information that's in here. So sometimes even recycling the app pool can have a couple consequences. And two of the consequences are your in-process state or cache. Any information that lives in that process dies. It doesn't try to hand it across. That wouldn't be very useful because you're trying to get a fresh start anyways. And the other thing is there is a first hit. A lot of requests, uh, the, the app pool itself, the worker process, takes a little bit of time to start up, as well as, let's say it's ASP.NET. It has that first hit compile that it needs to do. And if you're building up your cache, it needs to go to the database, build up the cache, and everything else. So just recycling app pools is not always something you do just for the fun of it. That said, a lot of people will have the recycling options will be set to recycle. Here's the default, for example, on the servers every 29 hours. But we may say, let's recycle this at 4 a.m., for example. And we could do that instead. And so every morning at 4 a.m., I actually noticed that when I made a change to the app pool, it recycled that on me right there. So do be careful you don't make a change like that in production during the day. So recapping this, if you want to recycle an app pool, right click, and recycle. Notice that you have the overlapping benefit. A new one starts. There you go, it finished. And that was a real graceful handoff. Don't just kill it here unless you have to. Another thing is, let's say you have something with a real high CPU. This is PEG in the CPU, 100% CPU here. I go and I hit recycle, and I recycle, and I notice it's still there. It's hanging on to the CPU. Well, the default timeout is 90 seconds. It's purposely going to try for 90 seconds to finish all requests that are sitting in this worker process. It's kind of polite. It doesn't want to just kill it on us. And so as a result, if wait for 90 seconds, and it should close this one down, and all new requests will be handled in the meantime there. It can have requests going to both at the exact same time. But if it's affecting other things on your server and you feel it's worth the impact, you can go to this worker process, hit end process, and kill it. And that's not going to hurt the core of IIS. You're completely fine to do that. You've just thrown away any in-process memory and you've thrown away any requests 
that were currently being processed. Apart from that, there really isn't a consequence to killing that worker process. And the final note I wanted to make today is that the changes you're making here are what's called RESCA Runtime Service Control API, which means if you do a recycle on, let's say you have a web farm with three nodes, and I recycle this particular node, this only touches this particular server. Same with starting and stopping app pools and starting and stopping websites. Those changes aren't made to all other nodes. It's just made to this one. So don't assume that you can hit recycle, even if you're using shared configuration, and it applies to all nodes. And actually, that's a good thing in almost every situation. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this useful. And please, by all means, uh, offer feedback and comments. I love to hear from my listeners here. And I hope to see you again next week. Thank you.